Hello, this is Eve Starr with Eve Starr Fiber Arts coming to you from the beautiful Ozark Mountains. First time I've been able to get outside for a couple days because it was cold and rainy. It's still kind of cold, but I had to get outside a little bit. And I don't have my cameraman, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to do this one-handed. But uh, this is part of my series on how I oven dye, blend, uh, card, and spin my fibers. And this here is a good example of a mix that I'm going to use to get my kind of ochre yellow that I love so much, my golden yellow. Here's some that I dyed the other night. Y'all saw this on my video. And as you can see, it's blotchy. That's because the, the color strikes very quickly on Merino, and it just hits. And even though if the color bath looks still like it has a little bit of dye in it, it doesn't have much because most of it just bonds immediately with the fiber. And we used vinegar, and that was our mordant, and that's what causes the chemical reaction with protein fibers that gets them to bond. That's my Rooster Rudy back there. And I brought the color wheel out to show you a little bit of what I do. And uh, sorry about the flash there, but yeah, we got a little reflection, but it's a little bit overcast and it's my last bit of sunlight. So what I'm gonna do is break in a minute and show you the Carter in action. Just do it one-handed this time. Now, there's a misconception among uh, a lot of people out there of what a Carter does. Now, this is just the brush that's on here. We can lift that up out of the way, but there are two uh, drums. There's a smaller one called a Liquor In. Isn't that great? And then there's the big drum, and it's got what's called carding cloth on it, like we've seen on the flat hand carders. But the thing is, these pins on the carding cloth are staggered. They're not in rows like a comb would be. And there are two different ways of preparing a fiber. You can comb it by pulling it through, and you end up with this. This is called comb top. And it's all the longer fibers, and they're all aligned. And what I want is a woolen prep. And a woolen prep fluffs them all up like a cotton ball looks. You know, they're all going different directions. So I'm actually doing a semi-woolen because I'm starting with a worsted um, preparation. This is wool top, and this is merino. And so it's already been combed all in one direction. And I don't want that because if I twisted this into... Uh, if I spun this into a yarn straight from here, it would be a beautiful worsted because all of this would twist like rope because they're all lined up. And that would be great for socks and other things where you needed a lot of strength. But I'm after loft and poof. And so to get that, we need to rearrange the fibers and open them up and get them to go all over the place. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, I brought the color wheel out here to demonstrate how I take a bright sunny yellow and turn it into my favorite kind of ochre yellow. This is upcycled, uh, well, this is sorry silk. This is the thing I love that I've talked about a lot. It's pulled from the machines in India, and it's lint that would have been thrown into landfills that's dyed these beautiful colors for the saris. And so you've got these beautiful little fibers in here, but they're short. And so um, you, it's a great way of using silk in your projects, but you usually need something else with it, or you're going to have to spin it very tightly and... Uh, you know, because the fibers are so short to get them to stay together and not come apart. Okay, I'm going to break for just a second, and then uh, you'll see this in action. Hang on. Okay, I've taken some of my yellow and laid it on here. Now, this is super wash because some of it might be for sale in my shop. And, you know, I like regular wool that's not super wash for most everything because I love the sticky Velcro quality of it. So you see it's just coming apart in little strings and that's because it's not sticking together. It's been treated so that all those little hooks that are on the uh, little crimped fibers of wool have been kind of scraped washed off and so it doesn't stick together like it would in, in felt. So you see I'm laying it on here all different directions because I'm taking something that's been combed one way and I want it to mix all up all different ways. Okay, I'm going to lift up this brush a little bit so it doesn't make too much noise. Uh, the brush just helps to pack it on there. So I'm just going to turn this slowly. You see people turn these very quickly, and that is a bad idea. Because what happens is this stretches, your, your fiber stretches, and then it, and it releases. And what happens is it forms a little nip, which is a little pilled knot. And that's bad. You've damaged your fiber. Every time you damage it, you're going to lead to itchiness. And I'm the fussiest person on the planet. I didn't used to use wool at all because I thought it was all itchy. Okay, so you see what's on my drum now. I'm going to show you up here. That's what it looks like on the top. 
okay? And there's usually a strip on your drum carter that doesn't have any carding cloth. And you can tell there where it is and how much you've got. I, I keep it away from the edges and that keeps it real clean. I clean those out occasionally. This is a brother drum carter. I love it. It's such nice quality and it was very, very reasonably priced. Okay, so that's my bottom layer of the longer fibers, my merino. So now I can add some shorter fibers and they're going to come off later and not get all stuck in the pins. So if I want to, I could take some of this, um, oh, sorry silk, sorry, no brain today. And then this is some other brighter yellow that I did. And so what I also added to that was a little bit of purple. And this is why. They are complementary on the color wheel. And every time, let me find the yellow. Okay, oh, there it is. Okay, see how straight across from the yellow, there's purple. Every time that you add the complement of a color, you'll dull it out a little bit because it's the two, uh, it's the two primary colors that are missing. The primary is red, yellow, blue. And then, but you know, there's, there's some controversy there, but we'll talk about that another time. But the two other colors of the three uh, primaries of yellow are red and blue. You add red and blue, you got purple. So to add the other two primaries that are missing gives you a duller grayed out appearance. And I like that a little bit, not too much. You know, I want it to be pretty, but I want it to have a nice ochre quality like you would see on Rena not Renaissance paintings so much as maybe Impressionist paintings. So give me a second and I'll load up the tray again and show you how I do that. Okay, so here you see another layer of the longer fibers and then I fluffed up the sari silk. And let me show you how short that is. I've shown you in some other videos, but you haven't seen it. There it is. So those are tiny little, it's almost like dryer lint. It's very similar. It's real soft and fluffy if it's been combed and gotten the threads out of it. And then I'll put maybe one more little layer. Now, this is a lot normally, yeah, but I know it's going to go through okay because this is all super wash and it's soft, and so it's not going to get hung up. Okay, so there we go. And so we know that little spot had too much because it went back onto the liquor. I'm going to hold the, the brush down a little bit. There we go. So there it is. You see, again, I'm not going too fast. So I'm just adding it on. Now you're going to be amazed at how much bigger, now I'm not going to use all this in one bat, I'm just going to use maybe a third of this, how much bigger it's going to be when I take it off, which shows you we're not combing it and aligning it, we're fluffing it up. So let me put on a little bit more. Okay, I'm standing up now, we're on the other side, and looking at the, the large drum, and you can see the streaks of sari silk right there, and a little bit of the purple. And this is the first time through. If I wanted to really blend these into a uniform color, I would take it off and fluff it up and run it through as many times as I needed to, to really get a, you know, a uniform look. It's usually not what I'm after though. I don't really care for that. In fact, I often put like the darkest on one end and work my way down to the lightest so that I have a bat to work with um, when I'm making my Rolex that has all kinds of shades that I can place wherever I want to. So I usually don't go for that. Okay, so this is called a doffer. In fact, a doffer used to be children, a child in a factory because they had little hands and they would doff or take off the spools that were empty and put on new ones and start new threads and lose their hands often in the process. This saves your knuckles. It wasn't a cheap tool, it was probably $22 or so but I'm really glad I have it. So you, you pull up on your fibers, and you've probably seen other people do this, and when my cameraman is here, and I have two hands, I can do this with two hands. Uh, one way some people do it is they use the uh, two dowels, which I use for making my Rolex at my blending board, which would be my next video. Or you can use your flicker brush, which is very sharp, it's got very long teeth, and that helps to release anything from the drum, but you see how even those short sari silk fibers are coming right off because they were trapped between the, uh, now the, the wheel is weighted, which is nice normally, so I'll hold it with one arm, um, which really helps it to come off of the drum without getting all stuck. So here we go, and sometimes you can hold it like a ponytail and wiggle it back and forth, that works pretty well. Sorry for the poor camera work with one hand. 
I've had requests to show more action, and I've been trying to hide because I'm on prednisone and I feel all puffy. So I've been trying to avoid that, but I'm just going to have to do it. All right, so this is my very messy bat that I just took off. If I'd had two hands, I could get it off in one pretty, pretty bat. But I'm going to be taking it apart anyway and making it into Rolex. But do you see how much bigger that is? That's because we've actually taken fibers that are aligned and we've mixed them all up and fluffed them real big. So that is what a drum carter is good for. And down here is a tray that this is very clean fiber because it's already been picked. And But if you have something like a alpaca where they love to roll in the grass or angora, um, it has a lot of dirt. We call it VM. Sometimes it's vegetable matter. Sometimes it's just like sort of a mystery thing you don't want to know. And as you're uh, opening up and fluffing the fibers with these pins, that'll fall out down here and you can empty that out and you've got even cleaner fiber than you started with. So this is just a quick primer really on how to use a drum carter and what it does and why I use it. And as you can see too, you saw that there were streaks of, you know, some parts that the uh, yellow dye didn't strike real hard. Just one pass through the drum carter and it's already a lot more blended. And like I said, I don't want it any more blended than that for me personally, because I like my yarn to look like it was made by hand, because I'm very proud of that. So for now, that's that the next part of my fiber um, prep, my woolen prep, really. Um, we started with my oven dyeing. Uh, if you missed that, you can go back to part one and two. The oven is set at 225 to 250, and you leave the fiber in there for 45 minutes or so. Let it cool completely, and you should have pretty much clear water when you're done. You've soaked it in a tiny bit of soap, which helps the dye to travel. And you also soaked it in a little glug or two, maybe a quarter cup of vinegar to a couple gallons of water. And you, you can use any kind of dye, um, writ, acid dye, um, it's really the acid comes from the vinegar, so you can use other pigments as well, even food coloring, and it'll, it'll strike and, and stay. So we did that, and I washed it, basically just rinsed it, and I used the little bag for the Angora, and then we, we just let it dry on a drying rack with a, with a ceiling fan on low in the bathroom. Then uh, today we brought this out to show you a little bit of how we... Um, blend our fibers together on the drum carter. We card them and open them up. And then the next video will be the blending board. And like I said, um, I've got a dedicated cameraman now. <laughs> and so we will have lots more um, hands-on in motion. And then we're going to spin. And then I'm going to be at the uh, rigid head of loom. And I'll show you some of my weaving, my tapestry weaving, and my other weaving I do with, with these fibers. That's what this is earmarked for. I go through so much ochre that kind of uh, warm maize yellow because it sets off all the other colors and makes them really pop. So for now, this uh, lesson in drum carding was brought to you by my little Ozark Homestead. This is Eve Star. Please subscribe. Uh, we're, we're really growing now and uh, really appreciate that. And my Etsy shop is Eve Star Fiber Arts. See y'all soon.